Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Bell South, one single source for all your telecommunications needs. By Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome back to the Pyramid as the first round of the SEC tournament continues from Memphis, Tennessee. And the Tennessee Vols set to take on the Auburn Tigers. Charting lineups will go like this. The Tennessee Vols with a record of 11 and 15, 4 and 12 in the conference. Starts C.J. Black, unanimous choice on the all-SEC freshman team, the top freshman scorer in the league at 12 points a game. Charles Hathaway led all freshman rebounders in the SEC this season. Vegas Davis, another freshman, came on late in the year, had a career-high 12 against Kentucky. Cornelius Jackson, the fourth freshman to start, and, of course, Brandon Wharton, the sophomore, averaging in SEC games only 17.9 points a game, and that was tops in the SEC, second-team All-SEC choice. And for the Auburn Tigers, 15 and 14, 6 and 10 in the league, Injai starts the seven-footer from Senegal. This is his 10th start of the season. Pat Burke, 6'11", senior, had six double-doubles on the year. Wes Flanagan, the young man at guard whom we talked about, Damian Fishback, the former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, the freshman who has been in double figures nine games. This is his 15th start of the season. And another freshman, Doc Robinson from Selma, Alabama, had a nice assist to turnover ratio for Cliff Ellis and the Auburn Tigers this season. Auburn, the third seed out of the West against the bottom seed, Tennessee from the East. We'll tip it off when we come back to Memphis. the stars in your life the big dipper the little dipper and the milky way they're the reason we make ford windstar with over 40 standard safety features in fact windstar is the only minivan to earn five stars the highest possible rating in government crash tests follow the stars and they'll lead you to windstar ford windstar created for the most important people in the world week, Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the finest in collegiate and professional sports and entertainment events. Now you can be a part of the Jefferson Pilot Sports team with your very own JP Sports Gear. This high-quality collection is the same as worn on the sidelines each week by the Jefferson Pilot Sports crew. Call 1-888-ORDER-JP for your free catalog. JP Sports Gear, be part of the team now. The meaning of a word can change depending on how you see it. That's why Bell South spans the globe with cellular service on five continents, long distance networks in Australia, wireless systems in Europe, Latin America, and beyond. The world's most advanced technology launching your words to places all over the world. Because a word can have many meanings, but it means nothing until it's shared. Bell South. Nearly every day I talk to TSUM students who at first were apprehensive about going back to school. They'd ask me, have I been out too long? How can I work and go to class too? How do I get started? Now they're confident on their way to graduation and optimistic about the future. If your career has hit a dead end because you haven't been to college, call TSUM. We'll help you every step of the way. You can do it at TSUM. TSUM, the right school for night school. Tennessee coached by Kevin O'Neill in his third season and uh, making some progress by all accounts, starting nearly from scratch and attracting apparently the attention of some other schools. For more on that, let's go to Dave Baker. Thanks, Tom. Tennessee officials confirming early this evening that they have in fact given permission for Kevin O'Neill to talk with the folks at Northwestern about becoming their basketball coach. Of course, O'Neill having experience in that part of the country, having been up at Marquette, but he's brought a winning attitude and a belief to all those around the program that they can get it done at Tennessee. That's why they're concerned over this latest revelation and the possibility that Kevin O'Neill could be looking elsewhere. All right, Dave. Thank you very much. So interesting news, Kevin O'Neill. See the series record. The 90th meeting, and look at that game in uh, January. It was the lowest scoring game ever in the 29 years of Beard Eves Memorial Coliseum at Auburn. 43 to 35, Auburn beating Tennessee. Gerald Boudreaux, David Dodds, that's David uh, smiling there, and Chad Hillary will call the game tonight. Tom, that was also the lowest point total scored by Tennessee in 24 years in the basketball game. 35 points. And the Vols 
control the opening tap. Tigers went over to the man to man defense. It's going to be flying it on Wharton. Good matchup. Good quickness by both those guards. Total of seven freshmen out there on uh, the floor to start the game. That's amazing. Then in a tournament game where we're getting ready to start, here we are in March, and there are seven freshmen on the floor. Testimony to the youth of uh, these two teams, but uh, by this stage of the season, uh, not really freshmen anymore. A lot of them battle tested under SEC conditions. Pat Burke through the double team, kicks it back out to Flanagan, collides with Hathaway and travels. Brandon Wharton's one of the best, I think, in the conference at head fakes. Look at the spin move after he gets Flanagan up in the air, a nice little soft touch. Kind of creeps in the side of the net there. Didn't go in clean, but it got there. Wharton, the fourth overall in SEC scoring, ninth in field goal percentage. He is the best three-point shooter in the SEC at 43%. Tom, you talked about at the top of the show. He really is a very complete player. Handles it well and a good defender. And he had the assist to Black there, but Black had it rejected. Black hesitated if he'd have just turned to put it in the basket. He could have made it easily. Vegas Davis got his own rebound. He can't hit. On the floor, taken by Burke of Auburn. Stripped away from Burke and stolen by Tennessee. Quick hands that time by Cornelius Jackson. Not sure why Burke was handling the basketball. Should have given it up to the guard, gotten inside and posted up. They trapped Jackson, gave it to Black, and he traveled. Burke came to help as Black apparently had a clear path to the goal and made the freshman travel. I like the looks of this freshman. He had 22 against Kentucky, and he's averaged 13 a game in Southeast, Southeastern Conference contest. He's one of those good freshmen this league is boasting about this year. Topped all freshmen in scoring at 12 a game. The number two rebounder behind teammate Charles Hathaway. And the top free throw shooter among freshmen, T.J. Black. Here's Burke, surrounded by orange jerseys, and somehow pops it through. What did Burke draw a crowd? Auburn with immediate pressure. Trying to deny the pass. They're going to get a holding foul. Warden breaks to the ball. First foul of the game. We're tied at two. Played almost two minutes. By the way, this is our 10th tournament together. That's uh, kind of amazing we've been around that long, huh? <laughs> we were trying to figure out how many for me. 18, I guess. Yeah, I think it's 18 for you, 10 for you, and I are in the last uh, 10 straight. 10 together. Yeah. Jackson, wide open. Problem 17 won't go through. Strong rebound. Ripped down by the Tigers in John. Out of bounds. Deflected by Hathaway. Auburn gets it back. A lot of times we talk about centers running the floor and how important it is. Did you see Burke out there on the break? But more importantly, did you see how quickly Hathaway got down there to slap it away? Good defensive play on Hathaway's part and good running out by Burke. Way in backcourt, Flanagan takes the pass. Auburn has only put up one shot hitting it. They have turned it over twice. Flanagan with the spin, trying to dish it, picked off by Tennessee. That's the third. Flanagan had a wide open shot. I think he should have been a little bit more selfish and put that one up. Meanwhile, Tennessee has only hit one of their first five shots. Warden's in trouble, hounded by Flanagan, and the steal. Flanagan lays it in. Nice play. He got the ball out in front, and that's where you want it. Good pass by Fishback to get it out to Flanagan on the run. Fishback came to trap and made the play happen, and the Tigers have their first lead. Auburn played a little inspired defense in the first couple of minutes here in the first half. He's back and in drive with a trap. Jackson passed out of it. Davis thought about the three for a moment. Shot clock to seven and the whistle and a three-second violation on Tennessee. Watch again the trap over there on right on the sideline. Wharton had nowhere to go. Look at Flanagan look over his shoulder. He sort of measured Wharton to make sure he wasn't going to catch him and got the basket. Auburn with the lead as Aaron Green enters the game for Tennessee, replacing Cornelius Jackson. Green 6'2 sophomore from Sweetwater, Tennessee. Burke calling for it, takes it against Hathaway. Wharton comes to double, and a soft little baseline turn and bucket by Pat Burke. Tom, in all the years you and I have been watching Burke play, he is very adept at getting that shot off on the baseline, and he turns both ways. Green trap leaves it for Vegas Davis. Green for three. 
Black had it for a moment, but lost it out of bounds. Auburn's ball. I talked the ability of Burke to be able to go both toward the inside and then turn and go to the baseline. That time he went baseline and had a nice little shot in the bottom of the net. Soft touch for the 6'11 senior. Born in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, grew up in Florida, Cape Coral. Has all those Irish characteristics, though. <laughs> Is that good or bad? That's good. Three-point shot won't go for Fitchback. And Burke on the offensive glass, builds it through. Now that's an Irishman right there, going back with some strength and power. <laughs> and uh, six points for Pat Burke, and why not? Uh, St. Patty's Day is not far off. It hasn't been the luck of the Irish, it's been the hard work. Pat Burke carries Auburn to a six-point edge. and save at the Gafer Secret Sale Thursday. Find your Secret Sale card in the paper or pick one up at Gafer's. You'll save 10 to 100%. The Gafer Secret Sale, Thursday from 8 a.m. till 11 p.m. I'm Tommy Lasorda. Child abuse is a cycle that can be broken. If you need to break the cycle of abuse in your family, don't be afraid to reach out. You need to get in touch with an Exchange Club Child Abuse Prevention Center in your area to find out how you can get involved. Call 1-800-EXCHANGE. Today's game is brought to you in part by First Plus Financial. At First Plus, you can borrow up to 125% of the value of your home, less your first mortgage balance. Call 1-800-510-PLUS. Auburn in the midst of an 8-0 run. In fact, Tennessee on its first possession got the basket from Wharton. Since then, they've missed five shots and turned it over four times. Already Auburn with eight points off of those turnovers. And Pat Burke, who has done most of the damage for Auburn, gets a rest. Hathaway trapped in backcourt. Big man dribbles out of it. Hathaway, a bounce pass to Black, who missed the layup. Couldn't finish it after the Bruise brothers. Hathaway and Black had it on the fast break. Look at Kevin O'Neill. He's probably looking up and says, why aren't my guards involved in all this? This is big people. Black at 6'8", Hathaway at 6'10", handle it like guards. Well, well, somewhat like that. <laughs> Pitch back, checked by Green, and away from the ball, a whistle, and what's the call? Foul on Auburn, apparently, or is it on? Yes, it's Auburn. It's on Smith. Bryant Smith whistled for the foul. Watch this right here. Here's Smith, number 13. Now, he's trying to set a screen, and obviously set an illegal one to allow Williams to get open. Tennessee needs a bucket. Black with a high screen for Wharton. Instead, passed off to Green. Smith, good pressure on Green out front. Black turns, trapped, kicked it back outside. Well, Auburn's recovering quickly on those outside shooters. Tumbled away by Black and taken again by Auburn. Turnovers continue to mount at five. Fish back for three. Pretty shot. Damian Fishback, another good freshman in this league. And the full court pressure from the Tigers. And a steal. Fishback stripped and fouled by Davis. Damian Fishback getting involved in the action out here for these Auburn Tigers. I made a note on him the other day. I saw that they had retired his jersey back in high school. We'll go back and take a look at the play. Watch the pressure again by the Auburn Tigers. Not allowing it to come in. A little 
a little tad back that time as Fishback tried to go up and he'll go to the line and Smith go to the line and shoot a couple. Turnovers, of course, have been Tennessee's undoing on more than one occasion this season. And uh, leading to the free throw by Smith, who will have another. All 11 Auburn points have come after Tennessee turnovers. All 12 after the ball miscued. Green, foul to push. Called on Fishback. His first. Tennessee hasn't scored since that first basket by Brandon Wharton at the 1935 mark. It's 14-36. Best defense I've seen Auburn play in the last month. They've come out and they put a lot of pressure on Tennessee. So the balls have gone five minutes without scoring a point. Planning, hustling all over the floor. Green for three. Came up short on the floor. Who's got it? Held ball. Possession arrow will send it Auburn's way. Once again, good defense by the Auburn Tigers. They're really getting down and shutting down the shooters where they have a chance to get one up. Take a look at what they've been able to do. Auburn's already got 13 points off the turnover. All 13 of their points. Well, Bellis has them uh, wound tightly for tonight's game. Got upset as they were in their shoot around an hour on this floor yesterday and uh, had them run the line. Fish back, tried to the back door, and Jai couldn't get him, so he shot it in instead. That's the way. Make a mistake. Make sure it gets back your way so you can make the shot. Well, Tigers are really blistering the nets right now. 15-2. Davis nearly lost it. And Wharton fouled by Fishback. Flanagan got it. Flanagan got it. Flanagan got it. Flanagan wearing that uh, bandage on his arm. And as we mentioned at the uh, start of the program, had bone cancer surgery on May 15th last year, four-hour surgery, removing a sarcoma from that left humerus and then grafting a bone from his leg. Green trapped against the baseline. So one man trapped by Fishback. He hit the side of the backboard out of bounds to Auburn. Well, Tennessee's getting creative in their turnovers anyway. That's seven of them. And already Auburn capitalizing very well on the Tennessee miscues. The volunteers, I think, want to play the same kind of game they had back in January. Auburn's having nothing to do with it. They want more points. Well, they're close to what they had in that game now, considering everything. They had 43 to end the game. Williams takes it to the basket and is fouled. Tennessee started well with the basket by Wharton. Since then, seven misses, seven turnovers. Watch again. Good move to the inside. Pushing the ball down the middle. Franklin Williams goes in there. Wharton reach in. And Williams making a nice, good, strong move in there. First foul on Brandon. And uh, Kevin O'Neill's team. Seven turnovers, seven missed shots since the initial bucket of game. Lock out, he says, as Franklin Williams is coming in. Junior from Headland, Alabama, prep All-American there, who uh, drew that nickname the governor because of his natty attire. Scheduled to, to graduate in uh, June with a degree in social sciences and education. Here's the trap. Richard Lee on the floor for the volunteers, and a foul as Green tries to dribble up court. That one called on Derek Caldwell, his first. Tennessee really struggling to even get up the court with the basketball, even though the foul was committed that time. Well, with this pressure defense, Auburn's fouls are mounting. That's six against the Tigers. So the good news, if you're a ball fan, they'll be shooting free throws on the next one, one plus one. The bad news is they don't hit them very well. Only 69% as a team seventh in the SEC as C.J. Black gets a rest. There's the foul situation. Little Wharton trying to get around. Pressure by Auburn has been outstanding here in those first seven minutes. Green threw it inside to Haraway. He hands it home and a foul. Maybe that'll work wake up this Tennessee offense. That's one way to get it through. Yes, sir. Watch again. Charles Hathaway, the freshman, making the good baseline move. 
Once he gets inside around Franklin Williams, Burke tries to come and help. Forget it. It's already down the net. It's a pretty good move right here. You can see Williams trying to knee him out of bounds, and Burke comes over and gets him on the arm. So Tennessee goes about 7 minutes, 20 seconds without scoring. After the missed free throw, batted around to Burke of Auburn. A 7-minute-plus drought for the Volunteers. They're down 13. And Auburn will turn it over on the attempted pass to Burke. That's their fifth. Wharton looks over the defense. Still got Flanagan on it. Lee. Baseline drive and a tough shot, Rashard Lee. Now they're having success on that baseline over there on that side. Couple of good moves by the Vols. And they close the gap a bit. Smith gets it to Burke. Pat Burke turns on the freshman Hathaway. Nice move. Tom, that's that move I'm talking about. He goes both ways when he catches it on that side. He'll either go to the baseline or he goes right back inside. Smith will be called for over and back. Almost had the steal. Richard Lee with a nice baseline move. Last possession for the ball. Narrowing the gap stump. It's 17-6. Excuse me, 19-6. Back after this from Bell South. In Chile, in Chile, the mountains, the mountains are connected, are connected, connected to, to the, the desert. The desert, the desert is connected, is connected to the city. The city is connected to the ocean. The ocean, the ocean, and the ocean, and the ocean is connected to, to the forest. forest. Because, in, because Chile, in Chile, the people, the people, the people are connected to each other and to the rest of the world by, by Bell, Bell South. South. Bell South is all here. What's up is, it's the available new Ford Triton 5.4 liter V8. What truck does? What truck is, it's the wide open spaces of the world's only standard third door. What truck does? Tough is what tough does. The new Ford F-150, the more trend truck of the year. Built Ford Tough. At Hardee's, when we make biscuits, we start from scratch. But at those other places, they take shortcuts. We measure and mix and do everything by hand. They don't. We start fresh every morning. They don't. Because at Hardee's, we know how good made-from-scratch biscuits taste. Obviously, they don't. Right now, get our biscuit and gravy for only 99 cents. A made-from-scratch biscuit smothered in sausage gravy for only 99 cents. Only at Hardee's. Tonight's Bell South Call of the Week comes from this afternoon's action and shows that good defense always leads to good offense as Vandy's Pax Whitehead blocks the shot. The small throw passes to Maddox and Pax continues to run the floor. It's the recipient of the pass for the Monster Jam. And that's our Bell South Call of the Week. And here it's 19-6. Auburn scored 17 points in a row as Tennessee went through a long drought. And meanwhile, Pat Burke taking advantage of his experience. Senior against freshman. The lefty goes up, and he is four for four to start tonight's game. Tom, I like the way he makes that move into the lane with that left hand, because you expect a guy who's left-handed to turn and go baseline on that side. But he's just as adept, as adept coming to the inside as he is going to that baseline. Can't shoot much better than 88%. And Burke, of course, shooting 100% so far tonight. That, of course, the turnovers. Eight by Tennessee, leading to 15 to Auburn Point. Here's another one. Nope, Green saved it to Lee. And launches a three-pointer. Green shot way off the mark. This time it's safely collared by Auburn in the form of Doc Robinson. Burke. Out of bounds, last touch for the ball. Yeah, Burke tried to make a really tough pass that time to Smith, who was breaking on the baseline. Hey, Burke playing very well at the season finale against Ole Miss. He had 21 points, eight rebounds, played very well. Cornelius Jackson returns for the Volunteers. Auburn gets it inbound safely, and now into Burke. 
looking to pass out of it. Doesn't know what to do with it. Finally got rid of it. Entry pass again. Burke, double team, steps toward the hoop and travels. Might have had a little assistance that time, too, in the back. C.J. Black was helping him a little bit toward that basket. Seven Auburn turnovers, but they lead 19-6. Auburn's backed off with that full court pressure that they had on Tennessee earlier. Now they're doing it with a half court zone trap. It's like a 1-3-1. And Wharton pitches it into front court. Cabela feeling that he has the advantage with that defense that they did. Black called for the travel. C.J. Black shuffling his feet again in an attempt to get to the hoop. Nine Tennessee turnovers. I think obviously Cliff Ellis has made the right decision at this point anyway. He's turned that defense up and he's made it very tough on Tennessee's offense to get the ball up the floor. Nine of Tennessee turnovers leading to 15 Auburn points. Cliff looks like he's got a piece of paper in his hand. He's got a game plan in his hand. Wharton with his quickness steals the ball from Burke. Here's Brandon Wharton quickly in front court. Black comes out away from the basket. And a three no good. Black from the three point line. And an over the back foul, Richard Lee. Cornelius Jackson really had a pretty good look at the basket that time. Didn't have an Auburn Tiger running at him. <laughs> Actually, the foul on Torrey Harris and not Richard Lee. First on Harris. As Charles Hathaway returns, replacing Torrey Harris. Auburn Club got off to such a good start in the Southeastern Conference and then faltered along the way. Obviously, he ended up with a 15 or 14 record and 6 and 10 within the league. They really thought they were going to make a run at it in early January. Caldwell, open three. Williams can't save it. Out of bounds to Tennessee. Tennessee's offense has been so anemic here this night. I mean, they've got six points already, and it's simply because they can't get the ball to drop, can't get the good shots they've got, the open shots to fall in, and turn it over to Booth. So they've gone 10 minutes, half the opening period, with only six points. That's a good one. Yep. I tell you, Tom, I talked about the top of the show. He's the most consistent performer they've had all year long. He's the one guy they can look to for a little bit of leadership on the offensive end. Robinson brings it back out to set it up. Williams for three. Bad looking shot all the way over the basket and into the arms of Charles Hathaway. Jackson with a jump stop and a dish inside, deflected by Auburn. Saved, though, by Hathaway. Here's Lee. Now yeah, give Hathaway credit, too, for saving that basketball, getting it back to Lee, who had the open jumper. Tennessee making a little bit of a run now. At least they've got it down to a nine-point deficit. They're on a 9-2 run. To close with him. Williams fouled by Cornelius Jackson, his first. Brandon Wharton, all year long, has been the one guy that's been able to get big baskets when Tennessee's needed them. Right there, he got one to help them to get this run started. Here's Lee with the finish after Hathaway saved the ball from going out of bounds. Richard Lee. Only the fourth foul against Tennessee. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Burke with a diagonal pass to Williams. And Robinson. Doc Robinson with his first bucket. Tell okay, you what happened that time was Jackson went behind the screen and it allowed Doc Robinson to get an easy shot off. Now Auburn comes back with that half-court trap. And a deflection. Robinson can't make the steal, but gets a pat on the rear end from his coach Cliff Ellis for effort. Cliff's got a good half-court trap going right now. Tennessee is somewhat reluctant to go in there after. Cliff's having a conversation with somebody over there. Not anybody on the team or his staff. Well, Tennessee went to six minutes or so, six or seven minutes without a point. That last bucket ended an Auburn route, and here's Wharton nailing the three. He has seven points. All you got to do is just give him an opening, and he'll let it go. 
Auburn went uh, three and a half minutes without scoring before their last bucket, so it's been an ebb and flow uh, first half here on the banks of the Mississippi. Burke back in, gets it back outside, calls for it again, and now gets it. Pitched it in the backcourt, and it'll be over and back. Burke trying to hit Robinson, commits another turnover, and they've evened up now at nine apiece. Ellis and the Tigers, though, still lead 21-13 over Tennessee. I remember cold winter mornings, biscuits rising high, sausage frying in an old iron skillet, and the twinkle in Grandma's eye. Brunel's old folk country sausage, the taste takes me back. It all started in my kitchen. Put a twinkle in your eye. Enjoy the great taste of Fernell's Old Folks Country Sausage today. Because it's good. The taste takes me back. This is an SEC athlete. He practices even in his sleep. She will always rise to the challenge. This is an SEC athlete. She's her hardest critic. He has the strength to win under pressure. He is the excellence that wins championships. For their blood, sweat, and tears, we salute them and replenish them. The SEC and Gatorade, partners committed to athletic excellence. Got a board meeting, don't want to be late. Got some paperwork and goals that won't wait. Got a formal invitation to dinner tonight. And I can't stay late, cause I'm catching a flight. Get a good look for the way that you're living. Get a good look for working for a place. Seven thirty-six left. First half, 21-13. Auburn leading Tennessee. Auburn continues to shoot well, 73%, but they've gotten only 11 shots, 8 of 11. Tennessee, 6 of 15, 40%. As I noted before we uh, took the break, turnovers now all even at 9 apiece, but the difference is what they've done with them. As you see, the shooting woes for the Auburn Tigers, much better today. Nine turnovers apiece, but Tennessee scored only two points off Auburn turnovers, while Auburn has connected for 15 points off the nine Tennessee. Shot blocked, foul, Pat Burke. Number two on Burke. Watch Burke commit the foul inside. Good move by Lee and a terrific pass to the other side. You can see Black getting in position to receive the ball. No doubt about the fouls. Burke hammers him pretty good. Use the shillelagh on that one. <laughs> Burke is the uh, third leading shot blocker all time at Auburn, but now the uh, Tigers' leading score playing with two fouls is still 7.30 to go in the half. First point there for C.J. Black. He'll have another. Unanimous All-SEC freshman choice. And the Chattanooga native makes them both. As Auburn will send Alvin Jefferson into the game, replacing Burke. Jefferson, 6'9", senior, Forsyth, Georgia, averages four points, four boards a game. Started four games for Cliff Ellis this season. Tennessee's picked their defense up pretty well now. Good pressure on the basketball, denying passes. Fish back. Strong board by Jefferson. And saves it to Flanagan. Nice to reach down on your bench and grab a guy that come in here and get a rebound right, right off, of, off the pine. Immediate dividend from Alvin Jefferson with the offensive board. Good ball fake. Smith can't hit the shot, though. There's Jefferson again. Had it for a moment. Now Wharton claims it for Tennessee. Wharton spots Jackson in front court. Auburn defense gets back. <laughs> Got my pitch back to get over that screen to stay with Jackson. Hathaway gets Jefferson. Made a nice move to get free, and then, which has been the story for the Tennessee big men tonight, couldn't finish right underneath. And Flanagan can weave some magic, Kenny. Takes that ball and just goes right between those Tennessee defenders. Flanagan with the ball here. Giving it up. Injai posting low. And he's fouled as he spins to the hoop. 
C.J. Black whistled for the personal, which is his first. As Green, Davis, and Harris re-enter the Tennessee lineup. Kevin O'Neill doing some wholesale substitution here in the first half. 6.05 left in that first half. Auburn up 21-15. They've led all except the opening bucket. Pretty tough to come out and put pressure on Flanagan. Aaron Green just simply, simply watches the back inside as much as he can to help. This back goes behind the back. Didn't get him anywhere, though. Make your dribble take you somewhere. Or at least impress the people that are watching. <laughs> Shot clock at eight. Flanagan forced that one. Strong offensive rebound and the quick hand to Tennessee. Davis took the ball away and drew the foul from Bryant Smith. Smith had the basketball, then he lost it and tried to get it back with a little frustration, reached up and grabbed the man. And we'll walk down to the Tennessee free throw line on the ninth Auburn foul of the half. A reminder, at the conclusion of the game, we'll be selecting a BP best player from each team in addition to recognizing our two best players. BP and its dealers will contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institution scholarship funds under a conference of three players. Davis misses the free throw. Rebounded by Jefferson. 21-15. They are on pace for the same score of getting close to Caldwell with an air ball. Not, not even close. That one was closer to Beale Street than it was the basket. Wart, that one was in the bottom. Brandon Wart, good pull-up jumper. Nine points for Brandon in the first half. Well, he makes good decisions. Now all of a sudden, Tennessee within four. Does Auburn been on it in the drought. Just under the five-minute mark. Injai being bodied a little bit by Harris. Fishback. Rimmed out on the floor to Wharton. Brandon Wharton, four for four shooting here in the first half. Davis off a screen for three. And all alone for the rebound, Jefferson. Jefferson got three rebounds off the bench in about two minutes. Another three, no good, by Caldwell this time. Walmer's not been afraid to throw up threes all season long. Over 600 they've attempted. There's Caldwell with a nifty move to the hoop. As they went uh, about four minutes without a basket. Langan now wants to pick up Wharton at midcourt. Well, off of that uh, zone trap they had at half court. Oh, Wharton with a pretty move, Brandon Wharton. Five for five, including a three. He has 11 points. Or did he ever chew up Flanagan on that move? Fishback for three. <laughs> Damian Fishback has a couple of trifectas. And Tennessee takes a 20-second timeout. Just when the balls were making a run, Auburn regains its shooting eye. 3.45 left in the opening half. And Auburn kicks the lead back out to seven. Tom, I was talking earlier about their three-point attempts. They rank second in the Southeastern Conference in most three-point field goals attempted behind Florida. But their shooting has not been what they want out from that area. They've been shooting, they shot 30% coming in. And that's the worst ever for an Auburn team from behind the three-point arc. And while we have a moment, Pizza Hut presents making it great again and again. And let's give Brandon Wharton credit for making it great again and again. Watch the nice move, the pull-up jumper right at the free throw line. That's the way you run the break. Think you can't do it inside? Watch the move as he goes around West Flanagan for a nice layup off of the glass. Brandon Wharton getting it done with the jumper and taking it to the hoop. Wharton has Tennessee's only three-point basket. They're one of six. Auburn two of eight from the arc. 26-19. Wharton in no hurry as Tennessee with that deliberate attack. And the shot clock down to 10. Nice help that time on defense by Franklin Williams. Green for a bad pass, and it's out of bounds to Auburn. Right at the feet of Torrey Harris. No way he could handle it. 
10th Tennessee turnover leads us to a break. 3.13 left in the opening half. Tennessee still trailing Auburn, the margin seven. Did you see what I saw? Unbelievable. Did you see what I saw? It is getting so crowded around here. We're out of here. The new Ford Expedition. It seats up to nine and tows more than anything in its class. Ford Expedition, the only way to get there. Pizza Hut employee memo number 44. Okay, for all of you who love hoops, there's a number that's near and dear to your heart. Four! four as in the final four. And in honor of that number, we want you to offer a four for four deal. Back to work, everybody! Give them a large pizza, a Pepsi, some buffalo wings, and some breadsticks. That's four things. Four things? For four people. For four dollars each? Yep, that's four things. For four dollars each? For four people. You guys are quick. Of course, now that the phones are going to be ringing forthwith, you're going to have to put that ball away for a while. And by the way, you got to work on that hook shot. Oh. He said, what? I'll be there for 10 minutes max. Do not start without me. Slow down, you're gonna get us killed. You're driving like a bat out of Hades. Traveling's an adventure. Where you stay, shouldn't be. Fairfield Inn by Marriott. You're watching the 1997 Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament from the Pyramid in Memphis on the Jefferson Pilot SEC Network. Play a checker game on that guy's face. Good. Reminds me of the end zone in uh, Knoxville. And, of course, uh, the good news, Peyton Manning staying around for uh, another season, a senior season with the Vols next year. And we'll be hearing uh, from Peyton Manning, the press conference he had yesterday at halftime. And... Uh, not only good for Vol fans and for Peyton Manning as uh, Fishback misses a shot, but uh, a nice trend for all of college athletics to see uh, someone pass up the big bucks uh, stay another year school. I'm sure he agonized over that decision along with his dad, Archie. Well, he had good advice, I'm sure, and yep. uh, the money's going to be there. Caldwell with the foul. I'm sure there are a lot of SEC football teams not happy about it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they were hoping for an, uh, another uh, verdict. <laughs> Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Tom Hammond with Larry Conley, Dave Baker, Bob Kessling. Roger Roebuck, our producer, and Dave Burchett, our director, here in the River City of Memphis. Little well, Mississippi's pretty swollen out there today. I noticed it coming in. There is, and of course, the southeast racked by flooding, bad weather, the tornadoes of last week. It's uh, not been a good seven or eight days uh, for the weather in our viewing area, and we hope that uh, things are not too bad where you are. 26-21, the Vols continue in striking distance. Fishback forced that shot, made it anyway. That was a tough shot. I'm going to tell you what, and Lee was coming right after him. He had a hand in his face, and his body was coming in, and Auburn was almost another steal. They did get it. Well, Tennessee had done a good job of controlling the turnovers. They committed nine in the first nine minutes, but since that time had committed only one, that being the second. Tom, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that Auburn backed off of that pressure they were putting on Tennessee. They just put it back on and got another turnover. Lanigan takes it to the hoop for the baseline drive. And once again, points off of turnovers. Four points for West Flanagan. Bumps the lead back to nine. Points off turnover. I think that's 17 for Auburn. Hathaway. And that would go down and come out. There's Lee to put it home. Sharp Lee playing well off of the bench here in the first half. Has eight points. Shard Lee and the Sophomore from Durham, North Carolina, doubling his average here in the first half. Lightning well, didn't take advantage of the Williams screen. Williams launches a, a three way off the mark, but there's Jefferson to put it back. 
Well, Jefferson has played well off the bench. He and Lee, Jefferson for Auburn, Lee for Tennessee, played very well in substitute roles here in the first half. That was the first bucket for Jefferson, but he has four boards. 120 left in the half. Hathaway with a monster screen for Wharton. His three-pointer won't go down. Jefferson taps it to his teammate Fishback. Flanagan tried to lob it to Jefferson. Made a tough catch, but traveled. Alvin Jefferson right there who committed the traveling violation, which will give the ball back to Tennessee. Let's just play underneath as Jefferson comes up with the ball, goes back inside with a good, strong power move. Jefferson showing you some of uh, what he's been able to do in the first half, and that's rebound. Bryant Smith returns for Auburn as Derek Caldwell goes out. Flanagan nearly had a steal. Tennessee retains possession. 59.2 left in the half. Tom, I really think when Auburn's got the defense turned up, when they really come after Tennessee, whether it's in the zone press or a man-to-man, -man, they're a much better basketball team. Cliff Ellis backed off of it for about eight minutes and allowed Tennessee to catch up. Now they're back after him again. But he got in a bit of foul trouble, so I guess that's why he backed off, especially Burke. And here's a trap again, causing a turnover as Richard Lee sails it into the Auburn bench. And that's an even dozen now for the Volunteers. You know, one thing he does have, he plays a lot of people, though. He'll go down about nine players deep on his bench. Final seconds, opening half. Smith, great fake, and hit the shot. Textbook. Oh, Auburn's been on a roller coaster, haven't they? Great start, nothing in the middle of the first half, and then they've opened it back up here for the latter stages. And another steal. It's feast or famine for the Tigers. They're in a feast right now as Jefferson will shoot two. Once again, his defense making offense. Auburn's defense is coming up with a lot of turnovers, and they're pushing the ball and getting basket. Watch Lanning can give this one up. Wharton with a step in commits his second foul. And uh, Williams will go to the line. I can hear Kevin O'Neill over here talking about saying you gotta take care of it too. Here's Kevin. Well, the frustrating year for him. I think he thought he was gonna be a lot better. Well, they were uh, decent at home and had some big wins, but on the road they just uh, after trouble as Williams hits the free throw and it's 35-23. Three points for Franklin. Tennessee can hold for the final shot. Morton trapped, dribbling his way into a steal. Numbers, Flanagan lobs for Williams or trying to get it to the basket, I guess, as time was running out and couldn't quite get it down. But the Auburn defense, tough early. They couldn't buy a basket in the middle of the half, then they closed with an 8 nothing run. 35-23 at intermission. Stay tuned now. Bob Kessling will be along to take you through halftime. Basketball is brought to you by Bell South, one single source for all your telecommunications needs. By Fairfield Inn by Marriott. And by Purnell's Old Folks Country Sausage, because it's good. Just how strong is the Southeastern Conference? Strong enough to turn individuals into heroes and teams into champions by providing millions of dollars in scholarship awards. At Regions Bank, our employees have also built a strong, award-winning team as we've grown from three small banks in Alabama to over 360 offices throughout the Southeast. All of us at Regions are extremely proud 
to be the official bank of the Southeastern Conference Championships. The Southeastern Conference enjoys a rich tradition of excellence in both academic and athletic endeavors. A major reason for the success of the SEC is our partnership with some of America's top corporations. As corporation sponsors, these businesses help fund SEC youth clinics, drug education programs, and are the official presenters of each of the men and women's conference championships. The Southeastern Conference is proud to be associated with these companies, which are making a positive contribution to intercollegiate athletics. If you've done the math and figured out that you can consolidate bills and still afford to make some home improvements, but the lenders tell you that you don't have enough equity. Hi, I'm Dan Marino. If this has happened to you, call First Plus Financial at 1-800-510-PLUS. They'll lend you up to 125% of the value of your home, less your first mortgage balance. There's no application fees, and you'll get an answer before you hang up. Don't listen to those other lenders. Call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. The best of the SEC is brought to you by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Of course, the South Carolina Gamecocks won the regular season championship led by their great guards, one of those Larry Davis, averaging 16.7 points a game, third in the league in scoring. The leading scorer in the Southeastern Conference is Ron Mercer of the Kentucky Wildcats, over 18 points per contest, and there's B.J. Mackey of South Carolina, number two. Rebounds. Well, Derek Hood of Arkansas is the leading rebounder, over eight a game. Tyrone Washington and Ansu Cisse come up next behind Derek Hood. The leading assist man in the Southeastern Conference, Kareem Reed of the Arkansas Razorbacks, over five and a half per game, and that one to Derek Hood. You see Melvin Watson of South Carolina is second. Anthony Epps of Kentucky is third in assist. And Greg Stoll of Florida, the leading free throw shooter. That's a look at Mobile's best of the SEC. We're here at the Pyramid in Memphis. Game three of four today in the first day of the, day of the SEC Basketball Championship Tournament. Auburn leading 35-23 at halftime. The Tigers now this first half shooting 54% from the field. Nine different Tigers have scored. No Tigers in double figures. And again, as usual, Tennessee is led by Brandon Wharton. He has 11 points in this first half. Been kind of a disappointing basketball season for the Tennessee Volunteers, but the Tennessee fans kind of got an uplift yesterday with a big press conference. Peyton Manning, everybody thought he was going. He finally made his announcement about next year. I've had an incredible experience in the University of Tennessee with all the people that I've met, learned from, and become friends with here. College football has been great to me. So have the people and the coaches and the players that I've played with the past three years. I also want to have a great experience in pro football. As difficult as it's been, I knew I couldn't make a bad decision. But I knew whatever decision I made had to be my own decision and nobody else's. I want to thank the people close to me, especially my mother and father, for allowing that to happen. I thoroughly researched the situation and gathered a great deal of information. I've asked dozens of people what they thought, and I've prayed a lot about it also. I knew I wanted to be 100% sure of my decision. I made up my mind, and I don't expect to ever look back. I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. Yeah! And the celebration continues all through Big Orange Country as Peyton Manning. you got to remember, this young man's only 20 years of age. He's going to graduate this May from Tennessee, his undergraduate, in just three years. And now he goes for his graduate degree as he leads Tennessee's football team next year. He, indeed, is a remarkable young man. At halftime, though, Peyton Manning's Tennessee Volunteers trailing the Auburn Tigers here at the Pyramid in Memphis. We'll continue at halftime when we come back in just a moment. The meaning of a word can change depending on how you see it. That's why Bell South spans the globe with cellular service on five continents, long distance networks in Australia, wireless systems in Europe, Latin America, and beyond. The world's most advanced technology launching your words to places all over the world. Because a word can have many meanings, but it means nothing until it's shared. Bell South.
giant steps forward. I will rock the boat and everything else. I will get in your face. I will run, for this race is mine. Ford Mustang, it's your race. I got a conference call and progress to chart. Work's piling up and I need a clean start. Got a special presentation, wanna make it on time. Got some travel plans, I'm working overtime. Got a good look for the way that you live. SECsports.com is the one site on the World Wide Web to get the latest SEC basketball information. Follow all the action during the tournament time with live stats, exclusive photographs, and interactive games. So get in the game at SECsports.com. Let's go to the Jefferson Pilot scoreboard. What else is going on around the country? St. Joseph's leading St. Bonaventure, 75-59. That, that's a final now. Rhode Island beat Virginia Tech, 67-63. And the Big East, Georgetown leading Miami, 26-24. That's in the second. Other scores of the ACC, Georgia Tech leading NC State 20 to 19. That's in the first. In the second, Temple leading Xavier 38-27. Final, Texas Tech over Kansas State 73-57. Also in the Big 12, Missouri on top of Nebraska 43-33 in the second. Villanova beats Syracuse in the Big East. Also Providence a winner over West Virginia 76-69. Tulsa has defeated UNLV 68-65. Oklahoma State beat Baylor 80-66. And in the first, Cincinnati leads St. Louis 38-20. UNC Charlotte upset Louisville 64-60. UAB beat Tulane in an upset 74-70. TCU knocked off Fresno State 106-81. So the Horned Frogs roll. And here, the Auburn Tigers are leading Tennessee at halftime, 35-23, trying to join Vandy and Alabama moving on to the second round of the SEC tournament. We keep it moving. Moving, moving, moving. Oh. BP, we keep it moving. At BP, we know the best part of life is not spent at a gas station. That's why everything we do, from our world-class fuels to BP credit cards, from pay at the pump to BP shops, we do to keep you moving. We keep you moving. We keep you moving. We keep you moving. Today's All Tell. More than a leading telecommunications company across America. More than the best in cellular communications. More than information and network management for financial institutions and other businesses around the world. Today's Alltel. Now the one choice for all together better solutions for you and your company. Play the games between the games at the 1997 SEC Men's Basketball Tournament. Visit the Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair March 6th through 8th at the Cook Convention Center in Memphis. See former conference stars and test your skills at a variety of interactive basketball games. Play trivia and see displays on the exciting history of SEC basketball. Pep rallies, youth clinics, food courts, and fast breaks. It's all at the Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair, where the games begin. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 14, the brain. An active brain, like those found in Advance Auto Parts salespeople, is capable of analyzing any automotive problem. I can't understand why I'm losing compression. In a millisecond, the brain is working, computing options, calculating dimensions, until it comes up with the solution, allowing part number 12, the hand, to take over. Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. Today's game is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Auburn leads Tennessee at halftime, 35-23. You all know this is going to be Dale Brown's last SEC tournament, but now the questions, what about Kevin O'Neill? As Dave Baker reported to open our show, UT has granted permission for Kevin O'Neill to talk with Northwestern about their opening for their head coaching job. Now Tennessee tries to rally in the second half against these Auburn Tigers. To call it for you, let's go back to Tom Hammond, Larry Conley. 
All right, thank you, uh, Buckeye Bob. You can get back to those ribs now, and uh, we'll take it from here. Um, first half, uh, Auburn led by as many as 15. Tennessee closed to four before Auburn sprinted clear again before uh, intermission. And uh, Brandon Wharton, really the only man keeping Tennessee in the game at the moment. Yeah, he had 11 in the first half and really did it from just about everywhere. You can see one of his jump shots from about 18 feet. Jim Mann was very consistent in the first half, much like he was all season long. For Auburn, it was the inside play of Pat Burke early that got them going. He was four of four, canning his first four shots, doing it the right way, spinning to the inside, also working off of the baseline. And let's take a look at our first plus financial halftime stats with the uh, shooting nine of 23 for Tennessee. That's 39%. Auburn, 14 of 26 for 54%. Free throws, six attempted uh, by both the, by each team, and uh, Auburn getting one more. Not much going from the three-point line for either team. Auburn, a slight edge in the rebounds. Turnovers, though, 14 by Tennessee, leading to 20 Auburn points as the Tigers played nine players in the first half and all nine scored. But the big, uh, the big note there is 20 points off 14 Tennessee turnovers. We're at halftime with Auburn up 35-23. The second half coming your way from Memphis in a moment. Everyone needs someone who will be there. Everyone needs someone on their side. Everyone needs a plan for the future. So call your nationwide insurance agent for advice on life insurance, annuities, and other solutions for a secure financial future. And have someone on your side for life. Nationwide is on your side. Pizza Hut employee memo number 44. Okay, for all of you who love hoops, there's a number that's near and dear to your heart. Four! four as in, in the final four. And in honor of that number, we want you to offer a four for four deal. Back to work, everybody! Give them a large pizza, a Pepsi, some buffalo wings, and some breadsticks. That's four things. Four things? For four people. For four dollars each? Yep, that's four things. For four dollars each? For four people. You guys are quick. Of course, now that the phones are going to be ringing forthwith, you're going to have to put that ball away for a while. And by the way, you got to work on that hook shot. Oh. Presenting the Yardman by MTD 3-in-1 self-propelled mower. It mulches, bags, discharges, has a six-speed drive and a powerful engine, all for the price of much tamer mowers. Yardman by MTD Mowers and Tractors. American-made, American-owned. When you get a price quote or see an advertised price from Capital Hyundai, there are never any add-ons. What you see is what you get. No surprises. See the biggest selection of 1997 Hyundais in Central Alabama now at Capital Hyundai. Consumer Digest Best Buy, the Hyundai Elantra loaded with these options, just $12,988. $12,988. That's our out-the-door price now. All you need is a tag. Capital Hyundai, behind Toys R Us on the Eastern Bypass. Jefferson Pilot Sports' exclusive presentation of SEC Basketball is being brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By BP. At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. By Yardman by MTD. It costs less, but it has so much more. And by Alltel, the one choice for altogether better solutions. Welcome back to the Pyramid in Memphis as we approach the second half for Tennessee and Auburn. And uh, this, of course, is the first game of an SEC tournament doubleheader. Coming up in the second game tonight could be uh, the Dale Brown finale as the LSU Tigers take on the Georgia Bulldogs. That'll be our second game here in the first round of the SEC tournament. I understand Dale Brown had a nice party for the media last night. How about that? Throw a party for the media. I think maybe it's to apologize for all those late night phone calls and letters. <laughs> I know a lot of coaches like to throw a necktie party for the media. One of those uh, public hangings. He has been an oftentimes kind, generous, wonderful person. Oftentimes you do battle with him. Neil Brown of the Tigers in the second game against the favored Georgia Bulldogs. And right now, the favored Auburn Tigers lead Tennessee 35-23. And as 
Bob Kessling and Dave Baker noted earlier could be uh, Kevin O'Neill's last game, too, uh, getting some offers from other places, most recently from Northwestern. Tennessee officials uh, granting permission to talk to Kevin, who is completing his third season in Knoxville. Had four good years at Marquette University before he made the move down to Tennessee. Very close to Chicago. Milwaukee is close to Chicago, you're right. About an hour and a half. Tennessee's ball to open the second half. And here comes that Auburn pressure defense trapping Wharton in backcourt. Tennessee 0-8 uh, when they out-rebounded, and they were out-rebounded by two in the first half. Now, once again, Auburn opened up with a little bit of pressure, and I think that was what made them successful in that first half. Wharton penetration dished it off to Hathaway. Nice looking shot from Charles Hathaway, his fourth point. The 6'10 freshman taking a step out, looking at the basket about 10, 11 feet out and just burying it. Showed us a little rage, didn't he? Sure did. Doc Robinson opening uh, the second half at the point for the Auburn Tigers. And launches a three. Hathaway, great position on Burke through a fairly nasty elbow that didn't connect. And Wharton pulls up for three. Burke has the rebound. Now, once again, we've got those seven freshmen starting the game in the second half, just like we did in the first half. Robinson cut off by Hathaway. Good help defense by Charles Hathaway. Burke wants to high post screen using Flanagan or letting Flanagan use his body and decided not to. Njai shoots over Black. Pretty shot. How about the centers getting it done, huh? Njai turning and looking from about eight feet and burying one. Fourth point for Mamadou Njai. Wide open, Hathaway. That one would not go down, but kept alive by Davis for a moment. Now Flanagan has it. Three on two, Auburn. Robinson pulls up. Now Burke inside. Gets a step, the jump shot. And missed it. Hathaway fouled by Njai as he comes down with a rebound. Burke, instead of going toward the basket, fell away and couldn't connect. Yeah, I really thought he took a bad shot that time. It was really out of his range, fading back that way. Watch Wharton go inside, give it up to Hathaway. Charles sticks it in the bottom of the net. Good assist. Watch Njai. Mamadou Njai turns and looks. He fades away from Black and makes a baseline jumper. Pretty good looking shots for the two freshmen. Backcourt pressure from the Tigers. Now Wharton sets it up. Corey Harris on the floor now. Nice pass inside and a bunch of good by Davis. Cornelius Jackson with a good look, a good pass. And the finish. Let's go to Vegas. Davis has his first basket of the game. Good rolling snake eyes on that one. Ten point. Auburn lead. Burke conceded that outside shot by Hathaway, passed it up. Now on the low post, Burke draws a double team from Wharton, stolen by Davis. Hathaway. Blocked by Njai, Hathaway got it back. Second block by Mamadou Njai. And a hand check foul, Doc Robinson of Auburn. Well, Hathaway keeping the ball alive on the baseline down there, even after the block. Got it back to the outside and gave Tennessee another chance. In for Auburn is Bryant Smith replacing Doc Robinson. takes the inbound pass, and Wharton will set it up. Wharton guarded by Flanagan. They want that high post screen again. Good switch by Njai. And he got back. Harris, of course, rarely shoots. Black, 18-footer off the front rim, put in by Harris. He may not shoot well from out, but he can shoot well from about three feet. Good offensive board and put back for the first Torrey Harris basket. 
Auburn using their two big men right now. In Jai and Burke both out there setting screens on either side of the free throw line right at the elbow. Off the screen, fish back. Good defense by Davis. Burke again draws the crowd, gets rid of it, takes it back. Black flopped and Burke put it through. Black wanted the charge. So did Kevin O'Neill. He didn't get it. Burke in double figures. Wharton with a nifty ball handling that time down the sideline, avoiding that Auburn press. Davis traveled, lifted his pivot foot under the Auburn pressure defense. We'll take a timeout with 15.54 left in the game. Tennessee trying to close the gap on Auburn. This helped. Torrey Harris hits the offensive board and puts it home, but still a 10-point deficit. Today's Alltel, a leading information services and network management company for financial institutions and other businesses around the world and a leading telecommunications company in hometowns across America. Today's Alltel. Now the one choice for altogether better solutions for you and your company. Advance Auto Parts is proud to be a corporate donor to the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. Over the past few months, Advance Auto Parts stores throughout the southeastern region of the United States have raised over $600,000 to fight the disease. Advance Auto Parts and the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, together walking for the cure. Nearly every day I talk to TSUM students who at first were apprehensive about going back to school. They'd ask me, have I been out too long? How can I work and go to class too? How do I get started? Now they're confident on their way to graduation and optimistic about the future. If your career has hit a dead end because you haven't been to college, call TSUM. We'll help you every step of the way. You can do it at TSUM. TSUM, the right school for night school. 39-29 at the 15-54 mark. Tennessee got it down to single digits momentarily before Auburn put it back up into double figures. And the Tigers, as we said, have led all but the opening basket of the game. That was from Brandon Ward, who scored to open the contest. And then Tennessee had a drought and were outscored 17-0. Auburn took control at that point. Field goal shooting, you see much in uh, the same for Tennessee and uh, Auburn, too. Once again, Burke trying to set a screen for Flanagan. He didn't use it. Williams off the screen. Good reach in defense. Poked away by Jackson. Williams got it back. Now Burke spots Fishback, who travels. Freshman shuffled his feet and a dozen Auburn turnovers now. Tennessee doing a nice job of shutting down, closing down those shooters. Fishback had an open shot. It was either Wharton or Jackson got out there in a hurry. I think it was Jackson got out there on top to keep him from getting that shot off. Long pass to beat the pressure this time. Harris had a two-on-one with Black. Elected to pass it up. They go into that half-court deliberate offense. Screen from Harris. Wharton on the dribble. Takes it to the basket. Can't score. Fishback has it for Auburn. Flanagan for three. Kicks high into the arms of Black, who travels. Tough break for Tennessee. That's what you call a, a hustle play for the ball. It ends up in a tragedy. I mean, they had a chance to come down with a rebound, bumped each other off balance, and they get a traveling call. Black made a nice play. Williams open three. Franklin Williams better three-point shooters. Franklin has six points. And Lee with a long-range two for Tennessee. Rashard Lee in double figures. Ten points for him off the Tennessee bench. He's played well. He has four of five from the floor. Go, 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 go. 
as he staying close, but they can't get that run to put him over the hump. Fishback misses a three. Black lost it, but his teammate Wharton grabbed it. Bird was avoiding a foul right there. Black open from 16, front rim, and Flanagan takes it the other way. Tennessee gets back. Smith for three. Tanya Auburn wants to launch those threes. It is bombs away. Hathaway can't make the catch. We better get back and play. Just now coming back onto the court. It's five on four. Pitch back for three. Short. And a foul on the rebound as Lee grabs it for Tennessee. And over the back of Damian Fishback, second foul. Well, Auburn had the advantage that time, five on four. They could have gotten the ball into the inside. Simply because Hathaway was way on the other end of the floor. He didn't cross half court when that foul was committed. He was out there on the levee somewhere, wasn't he? <laughs> Keep an eye on Charles Hathaway. Now, once this ball is shot right here and it goes into the basket, Hathaway's nowhere to be found. There he is, and he uh, couldn't make the catch, took his eye off it, and goodbye, Charles. He went all the way, all the way under the stands. We hope he makes it back. He is, did. He is back. Got the pass there to Rashard Lee. Shot clock. Ten. Good baseline cut. Wharton. How did he do that? Oh, that was pretty. Took the dribble, took the baseline, took the bucket. He has 13. Nice crossover dribble. Nobody there to help on the other side on defense. A good push that time by West Flanagan. Trying to get inside to try to help, and Wharton was there before he could get there. Smith. Of it to put it through. And Hathaway tried to draw a charge, went down to no avail. Smith has nine points. And again, Auburn able to answer every time Tennessee makes a mini run. Watch again. Watch Brandon Wharton right here. See Flanagan coming after him? He can't get there. Wharton's already too quick inside and off the glass. This guy gets so low over the basketball. Watch Smith on the other end for Auburn. Avoiding the charge, getting the ball off of the glass. Always nice to see a guy get his body under control when he goes up to shoot that jump shot from about six feet. Bryant Smith. Stoppage in play. I'm not sure what the problem is. I don't know what the delay is here. Now we uh, get back to action. Trap of Green. Got out of it. Wharton dishing inside. Nice pass, and the block by Jefferson. Tennessee saves at the midcourt line. Rashard Lee with a good hustle play that time. Green, shot partially blocked, taken by Auburn. Green tried to lean in and get the uh, foul, no call. Frank Williams gonna have to put it on the floor, give it up, he did. Just barely got rid of it before the five second count. 12 minutes left in the game. Flanagan misses a long range shot, tapped, and uh, Lee sailing out of bounds, calls timeout. It'll be a 20 second timeout. Winner of this game will move on in the second round to face uh, second seed Kentucky. up tomorrow we'll move to quarterfinal action in the afternoon one o'clock eastern start vanderbilt escaping today with a come from behind win against mississippi state taking on the western division champion ole miss rebels while well, alabama looked awfully good beating florida today we'll meet the east top seed south carolina the overall southeastern conference champion then of course we'll be back tomorrow night with two more games so a quadruple header for you tomorrow on most of these stations. Hey, you know, Tom, in all of our experiences within the Southeastern Conference, I know we've had some great stories through the years, but I can't ever remember a year where we've had so many interesting stories. I mean, Rob Evans with the Ole Miss Club, the loss of Anderson at Kentucky, uh, Eddie Fogler's turnaround with the South Carolina basketball team. It just seems like every time we looked up, there was something new going into the Southeastern Conference in basketball this year. If it comes down to a championship game between Kentucky and South Carolina again, I think uh, the winner gets a number one seed in the NCAA tournament when it comes out on Sunday night. I would agree.
agree with that. We'll take a commercial break here with 11.36 left in the game, and Auburn up on Tennessee, 47-33. Presenting the awesome Yard Man by MTD Lawn Tractor. With an automatic transmission and powerful industrial commercial engine, it bags, mulches, and discharges grass, all for the price of much tamer tractors. Yard Man by MTD Mowers and Tractors. American made, American owned. We keep it moving. At BP, our high-octane Super 93 is formulated with our highest level of engine cleaning power. Super 93 delivers everything you demand in a premium gasoline, so you can concentrate on more important things. We keep you moving. moving. Oh, oh, oh. We keep you moving. Hey. We keep you moving. We keep you moving. If Hardee's has found a way to combine sourdough bread with a patty melt, perhaps any combination is possible. The new grilled sourdough patty melt from Hardee's, a traditional patty melt prepared in a very untraditional way, with two perfectly grilled slices of sourdough bread. Only at Hardee's. What will they think of next? For breakfast, try the new bacon omelet melt on sourdough bread. Our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week is Alabama's Jeremy Hayes. The freshman center from Boaz, Alabama, has a 3.1 grade point average in business. Congratulations to Jeremy Hayes of Alabama, our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. 47-33, Auburn leading Tennessee here, 11-36 left in the game. Auburn hoping for an NIT bid, and they need a... Uh, run here in the SEC tournament to accomplish that. I think if they pick up this win here, they're uh, pretty much a lock to get in. So far, they're shooting 51%. It's pretty good for Cliff Ellis' club this year. They average 41 coming in. It is uh, the worst field goal percentage shooting Auburn team in 39 years. But you couldn't tell it tonight. Hathaway with a putback after they missed again right underneath. But there was Hathaway right on the spot to put it on. Tennessee continues to rebound very well. That's their 23rd rebound against 19 for Auburn. Cobb has been turnovers, 17 Tennessee turnovers, leading to 23 Auburn points. Caldwell misses, but Smith wades in to get it. He and Hathaway come down simultaneously, and the possession arrow says Auburn's ball. Watch Charles Hathaway go battle inside number 55 and orange right here. Ooh, a nice little push off right there for Brian Smith to kind of clear it out a little bit for him. So much easier on the replay, isn't it? Flanagan sets it up for Auburn. He's checked by Brandon Wharton. Flanagan hasn't done much scoring tonight. Screen from Njai. Nothing there for Flanagan. Wes is looking to pass every time he gets his hands on the ball. Got it to Caldwell that time. Who made the fake to get open. Missed the shot. Block. Njai took it up and Hathaway rejected. Njai tried again. No good. Jefferson dribbles. And it's foul. What a strange sequence of events that was. After Injai came up with the ball, Hathaway, I think, made the terrific block on the left side of the lane. Let's watch it again. Yeah, Hathaway's right there. Then it goes back. Injai gets it, shoots the hook, and misses it. Jefferson goes up and gets it, and then he gets grabbed as he tries to go back up. Could it have been a three-second violation in there? Or maybe... Could have very well. Maybe a six-second violation. Third point. For Alvin Jefferson, we raved about his rebounding immediately upon entering the game in the first half, and he has a half dozen boards. He makes the two free throws. One of three seniors on this Auburn club, Flanagan and Burke being the other two. Wharton with that crossover dribble, and then had nowhere to go with it. Luckily for him, Njai batted it out of bounds. 
Flanagan on the bench now. They put Derek Caldwell out there with the responsibility for, for guarding Grant Brandon Wharton. Good double gets, screen. Got the double screen and the shot away. Rimmed out, went down and came out. Here's Hathaway, blocked and fouled. Jefferson got it. Tom, for every, whatever you want to fault Tennessee for in this basketball game or for their season tonight, they have really gone to the backboard hard. Watch the miss by Wharton, but once again, Hathaway right there to get the rebound. Volunteers really crashing the glass and making it tough on Auburn on the offensive end. Hathaway uh, averages about seven rebounds a game, and he has six in this one. He is the ball's top rebounder and the top freshman rebounder in the Southeastern Conference, the former prep All-American and three-time All-Stater at Hillwood High School. Hathaway from the Nashville area. Also was a shot putter in high school. Does that surprise you? Mm. Let's take a look at him, and uh, you can tell that uh, that would be a good sport for him as Pat Burke returns for Auburn. Hey, one thing, he could put that thing on his shoulder. I think he could heave it pretty good, couldn't he? <laughs> Doc Robinson at the point now for the Tigers. They lead it 49-37, just under the 10-minute mark. Well, Burke really draws a crowd, doesn't he? Everybody that passes by gives it a little swipe at the ball. Here's a quick move, and Torrey Harris with a hand in the small of the back is called for the foul. That's just the second team foul on Tennessee this half. Second personal on Harris. Tom, whenever you got a center like Pat Burke, who's very strong offensively inside, you've got to get a lot of help. You can't depend on one guy to stop him. Smith. Oh, what a rejection. Did Auburn. you see Hathaway go up? Auburn wants goaltending, but they won't get it. Watch Brian Smith make the move to the inside. Now watch Hathaway go up. Oh, did he ever get up on that one? Problem was, Vegas Davis had already fouled him, and that is the third foul as Hathaway rejects again in slow motion. I'll tell you what, he didn't make the all-freshman team in the Southeastern Conference this year, but he got a lot of votes. Cornelius Jackson replaces Richard Lee. That was the uh, third foul on Davis as Smith shoots another. That one looks better than the first. And it's 50-37. Ten points now for... Ryan Smith. Got it for a moment. <laughs> Good screen. Davis got it. Well, that was a terrific screen over there. Harris set a good one, and he just popped out and got the ball. Fourth point for Vegas Davis. Tennessee hanging around now, 11-point deficit. He can play some defense with some stops. Smith misses the three, rebounded by Hathaway. Seven boards for Hathaway right on his average. Looking inside, now whips it there to Hathaway. Takes Burke to the basket, can't hit it. And Burke has the rebound, gets it quickly to Robinson. Jefferson fumbles it away, Davis ties him up. Possession arrow again will adjudicate it and send it to Tennessee. Well, once the judgment has been made, the ball's gonna go the other way. I think you're a secret, but really a, a jurist of some type. Word for the day. Word for the day, yes. Tennessee with a chance to cut into that lead. And again, they trail by 11. And though, as we say, they keep hanging around, they can't get over the hump. They were within four in the uh, first half, cutting down what at one time was a 15-point Auburn lead, but four was as close as they got. Good staggered double screen. Burke stepping out to help, help against Wharton. Jackson, nowhere to go with it. Taken by Robinson. Robinson against Wharton. Brandon did a good job to cut him off. Smith takes it up and is called for the foul. 
Black takes the charge. Smith, the offensive player, control foul. That's his third foul. Well, that's a lost opportunity for Auburn right there. They had the break. Doc Robinson handling the basketball. Watch him look to the right. Thinks about taking it in. Nice job by Wharton to shut him off. Didn't let him drive the baseline. Then Smith with a charge. Gotta take advantage of those opportunities when they're given to you. And I thought that time that Tennessee had given Auburn an opportunity to get an easy basket. Give Wharton credit for the defensive play. And the score still 50-39. Neither team can score. Rashard Lee has equaled his season high with 10 points. Wharton for three. He was up against the shot clock, which only had three seconds left. Launched the three, couldn't hit it. Another missed opportunity for Tennessee. Fish back. Three rattled out. Half the way the rebound. Now neither club can find the basket. Half the way gives it up to Wharton. And Wharton threw it right to Franklin Williams, who was as surprised as anybody. I think Black was supposed to be in that position, and Black didn't even look. And apparently, uh, Franklin Williams lost a contact. He was so surprised at the pass from Wharton that his eyes popped. <laughs> Tell you what happened. He, it happened so quickly, he took it out and popped it right into his mouth. He was running down the floor with that contact in his mouth. We'll take a timeout here with 7-12 left in this SEC first round game. Kevin O'Neill and the Volunteers favorite Auburn Tigers. Auburn up 50-39. Everyone needs someone who will be there. Everyone needs someone on their side. You never know what the future will bring. So ask your nationwide insurance agent about life insurance to provide for your family, pay off your home, or put the kids through college, no matter what, and have someone on your side for life. Nationwide is on your side. Today's Alltel. More than a leading telecommunications company across America. More than the best in cellular communications. More than information and network management for financial institutions and other businesses around the world. Today's Alltel. Now the one choice for altogether better solutions for you and your company. If you want a meal and a deal, but you're sick of burgers and fries, try Subway's Fresh Value Meals and get a real choice. Choose from eight great tasting sandwiches made on fresh baked bread. They come with chips and a 21-ounce drink. Take the Subway Challenge. Take one bite, and if you don't like our subs, you get your money back. It's the Subway Challenge at a Subway near you. Hurry into Subway today for the world's greatest tuna fresh value meal. It's just $3.49, but only for a limited time. stats, but uh, Auburn, after shooting mostly over 50% the entire game, beginning to cool off down to 44% and giving Tennessee an opportunity that the Vols so far have not been able to take advantage of. I don't think he was full of his stats. I oh, think okay. he was just relaxing, right. enjoying himself. Being a part of all this uh, festivities here in Memphis for the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Wes Flanagan back in the lineup for Auburn. Coming to the seven-minute mark left in this opening round game. Winner meets second seed Kentucky tomorrow night. Burke muscling his way. Ball fake. Shot no good. Somehow, Williams had it for a moment and then lost it to Davis. Here's Wharton in front court for the Volunteers. Shot it right over 6'11", Pat Burke, and finally somebody scores. Both teams had been uh, suffering a severe drought. Wharton, number 15, and a smile for West Flanagan. Looked like they were stuck on 50-39 for about the last six or seven minutes. Fish back, fouled by Davis. That'll be four on Vegas Davis. Actually, Fishback might have gotten away with a push-off before the foul called on Davis. Watch Wharton again make the move right into the lane and then the pull-up jumper. 
Well, we've seen him do that a lot of that the last two years, including this year. Boy, Sophomore does a good job of that. And the trajectory uh, timed just right, planned just right. It uh, barely cleared the uh, first hand to go through. I like that young man as a freshman. I'm talking about Brandon Morton last year. Averages 35 minutes a game, which is the most on this Tennessee squad. Damian Fishback hits the first free throw. Davis committing his fourth, and Fishback hits them both. Ten points now for Damian Fishback, who averages seven a game. His dad, Charles, played for Cliff Ellis at Cumberland. That's the recruiting connection for the Kentucky Mr. Basketball. Rashard Lee missed it, got his own, missed again. Burke back tapped to Flanagan. And Fishback open three. Oh, boy, he's got the shooter's roll, doesn't he, huh? That's what he's calling it anyway. 13 for Damian. It's pretty soft when you can shoot a three and have it roll in like that. Fishback with a flop. Officials didn't go for it. Is that a fishback flop? Are we going to start something like the Fosbury flop here? And again, Tennessee had the opportunity to get back in and let the opportunity go awry. Wharton, though, still pumping them through. Game high 17 points for Brandon, who is averaging. Brandon Wharton uh, right around 17, 16, although in SEC games, as we said, 17-9. Tops in the league in SEC games only. Nice job by Jackson to shed Robinson off from penetrating. Here's Burke, again, surrounded by Orange. Missed the shot on the floor, picked up by uh, Williams. He almost killed Fishback with that pass. He threw it at him so hard. Now things settle down, and Robinson says, let's regain our composure here. Less than five minutes to play. 12-point Auburn lead. Nice fake. Oh, man, and then he lost the ball away. What a beautiful fake he made. Hathaway bit it hook, line, and sinker. And then Burke just lost it out of bounds. Couldn't put the ball on the floor and get it to the basket. I'd say that's a requirement for NBA players. You make a good fake, you better be able to put it on the floor and get it there in a hurry. And there's a steal by Fishback. He can't finish it. Tapped it, no good. Vegas Davis leads the Tennessee break. Here's the ball in the hands of Brandon Wharton. That's where they want it. Black. Tapped, no good. And rebounded by Auburn. That's two right underneath Tennessee bench. Burke runs the floor and jams. And one. Nice catch by Pat Burke. Looking over his shoulder, able to gather it in, also gather himself underneath the basket. What's his catch? Well, that's a good catch. One-handed, got the foul from behind. Doc Robinson with a good look up front. Good catch by Burke in the finish. And Vegas Davis fouls out of the game on this play. Not sure why you foul in the situation. You got no chance to reach the ball, just... Back off, let him have the basket, get the ball back. Yeah, poor judgment by the freshman Davis. Not only does he foul out, but gives him a chance for a three-point play when it was obvious that he's got to concede the basket there. So Davis fouls out with four points and four rebounds to his credit. Yeah, Kevin O'Neill with a decision to make. He's got his uh, troops surrounding him. Four points for Davis, the uh, first Tennessee player from uh, Arizona, from Parker, Arizona. Read a great quote about him. Said he's not afraid to shoot. I believe it. A couple of good games this year. You talked about his 12 points against Kentucky off the bench. He also had 10 points and four assists against South Carolina. So he rises to the occasion and gets good clubs. And indeed, didn't he? Pat Burke at the free throw line for Auburn, trying to complete the three-point play and shooting for his 13th point of the game. He hit six of his nine shots from the floor. That's his first free throw. Auburn now trying to put Tennessee away. Fish back a near steal. Tennessee gets it back. Tom, I really think Auburn's been successful this afternoon only because their defense has put them in that position. When they're out there aggressively pursuing the basketball or pushing Tennessee around and making it difficult for them to make passes, they've been able to be successful. I've often wondered about your biological clock since you travel all over the country doing games, and it, it is evening, not afternoon. Ah. We're inside. That's got to be evening somewhere, right? 
Floater's no good. Black kept it alive for a moment, saved to Wharton. Wharton shot, finds the bottom of the net. Brandon Wharton, 19 points. Wharton with a terrific game tonight. He's been just fantastic. The type, type of game we expected to see from him, though. Look out, look out. Williams for three. It's a rebound by Burt, and he's fouled. One of the things I have noticed about Pat Burt during his entire career is how, I'm going to say this in a kind way, how slow he is to get rid of the basketball once he gets it inside. He needs to get it out a little bit quicker. Hathaway committing his first foul, and it'll send Brandon Wharton, actually not a shooting foul yet, when we come back. What does this name mean to you? It means a tradition of great local telephone service and a lot more. It means seeing the world without leaving town. Video conferencing with clients wherever they are. It means the high-speed data links and networks that businesses require today. This, together with information services and cellular businesses, makes Altel a Fortune 500 company. And good company on the road to the future. You've done the math and figured out that you can consolidate bills and still afford to make some home improvements. But the lenders tell you that you don't have enough equity. Hi, I'm Dan Marino. If this has happened to you, call First Plus Financial at 1-800-510-PLUS. They'll lend you up to 125% of the value of your home, less your first mortgage balance. There's no application fees, and you'll get an answer before you hang up. Don't listen to those other lenders. Call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 12, the hand. A remarkable part of every Advance Auto Parts salesperson, the hand can grasp any automotive situation. My car goes... Instantly, the hand tests the electrical system, removes the dead battery, and with free installation, puts in a new Autocraft battery. All you have to do is shake part number 12. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Today's game is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Back in Memphis, here's our all-tell play of the game. And the man who had the all-tell play of the game, Pat Burke, on the nice catch. Doc Robinson delivering the pass. Burke gets it and goes back up, even with the foul. Still got the basket and the free throw. Pat Burke having a good game. And uh, sitting on the bench, getting a rest at the moment with... 340 left. He has 13 points and five rebounds. Jefferson double teamed for a moment by Black and Hathaway. 330 left on the clock. I gotta believe Auburn's gonna start to pull it out a little bit, maybe get a little patient, start to run the clock. Wharton fouls Flanagan. Brandon's third foul. Well, I'd have to say, for the most part, Wes Flanagan's done a pretty good job of taking care of the basketball tonight. Uh, when he's played a lot of minutes, I'm gonna guess he's probably been out there for 30, 32 minutes, somewhere in that area. He's been averaging or asked to be playing somewhere around 25 minutes during the month of February, but his uh, minutes have increased in the last couple of weeks. And for the game, he has five points and six assists. Black and Jefferson come down with it together, and that means that Auburn gets this one. Even with the youth movement of this Auburn club, I know Cliff Ellis has wanted to play a lot of freshmen. He went back to West Flanagan and Pat Burke late in the season, and even after Flanagan had asked to go out of the lineup because they hadn't been playing very well. Auburn with uh, a 15 and 14 record coming into this one would have to be ranked uh, one of the disappointments of the SEC season, and only six and 10 in conference play. Some people had picked them to win the West. That was one of those that had them in the top two. I felt like they were going to be up there. Part of it had to do with Flanagan's injury, though. I think none of us knew how serious that really was. You're right. 
Smith misses a three as the shot clock ticked down, and they are becoming more deliberate, as you predicted. And C.J. Black commits the foul, so Auburn will get a fresh 35. And time running out for Kevin O'Neill. Well, Alvin Jefferson to shoot a pair. Calling the elevator. Born in Macon, grew up in Forsyth, Georgia. Didn't play until he was a junior at Mary Person High School. Went to uh, Macon, Georgia Junior College for a couple of years before coming to the uh, loveliest village on the plain, Auburn, Alabama. It was over last week doing that uh, Mississippi, Aub Mississippi Auburn game, and uh, Chuck Parson came back for the oh, yeah. game. Had a chance to visit with him for a little while. Tigers enjoying their largest lead. Here's Tennessee numbers. And Hathaway, though, doesn't even take it. Wharton will launch a three, and he'll hit it well. I don't know why that Hathaway didn't take the two-on-one. Get it to Brandon and let him shoot a three. Tennessee takes a 20-second timeout. Brandon Wharton with 22 points. Wharton uh, really is one of the elite players in this league, and because he's on a team that doesn't get a lot of notoriety, and they've only won 11 games on the season, uh, people tend to overlook that, but Brandon Wharton can play with anybody. You know, oftentimes we do talk about players uh, who, who play on good clubs, and we seem to notice them a lot more than we do club players who, have, uh, who play on teams that don't have good records. Seventh 20-point game for Brandon this season. And underneath a traveling call on Injai. Well, when the Tennessee fans dissect this one, they'll find a familiar culprit turnovers. Total of 20 in the game for Tennessee and uh, 14 in the first half, which really led their, to their undoing. That and the uh, dry spell that was marred by poor shooting and turnovers early in the half. Auburn has gotten 23 of their points off Tennessee turnovers. So Auburn able to capitalize uh, when, they, when they are given the ball by Tennessee. Tennessee's only gotten six points off the Auburn turnovers, 16 of those. Hathaway air ball. Here's Flanagan against Wharton. And uh, wisely, the Wiley senior pulls it out and runs a little clock. Somebody didn't give Fish back the message. <laughs> he launched a three, and Tennessee takes it the other way. He didn't get the memo. Smith with a foul of Wharton. Fourth on Bryant Smith. I think Cliff Ellis, well, I, was, I looked up just as that shot was uh, released, and Cliff looked back at his staff and kind of looked, why did he shoot that ball? Why did he let it go? <laughs> and Doc Robinson replaces Bryant Smith. Meanwhile, Brandon Wharton will go to the line after another uh, big game here in the making. Made the All-SEC freshman team last year and had 27 points in an SEC tournament game against Georgia last season. Hey, one thing, the coaches have not overlooked this young man. They had him on their second team, All-Southeastern Conference. The coaches really like the way this young man plays. Right, the All-Stater from Nashville went to Overton High School. Pretty good football quarterback. And uh, really one of the elite players in the SEC. 24 points in this game. Another clock by Black that uh, got him nowhere, but then a steal, a back tap, and Wharton lost it. Oh, here he is. He comes with it on his back, and Flanagan takes it again. That looked like a pinball bouncing back and forth <laughs> before Flanagan jammed it home. No flippers out there to move the ball, either. You see the clock ticking down toward the 130 mark with Auburn in control. Lee... Shooting for a career high, or equaling shot, wouldn't go down. Let's go to midcourt and get an idea of what the action's like here in this Southeastern Conference matchup between Auburn and Tennessee. Look at Brandon Wharton on his back, come up with it, tried to make the pass, Flanagan intercepts and throws it down. This Flanagan playing an excellent game here this evening. But the Auburn Tigers will be advancing to meet the second-seeded Kentucky Wildcats. In tomorrow's quarterfinal round. That'll be tomorrow night game. 
Arkansas awaits the winner of uh, LSU and Georgia. It's almost, uh, I think, cinches an NIT bid for uh, Auburn to just win. Oh, take it out of here, Hathaway. Charles loves to slap him out, doesn't he? 16 freshman can do it. Watch Lanning gonna make the move down inside, and Hathaway just rejects. Thank you. And let's check in uh, with Dave Baker. Dave? Tom, uh, this is the Auburn radio crew, and the guy who's fourth down there figuring the yellow headphones, that's Larry Wilkins. He was doing something that Tom Hammond does all the time. He stopped at the hotel today and asked for the valet parking. Problem is, the guy that took his car was not the valet. So the Auburn radio network has been forced to use the Alabama equipment. So for one of the few times, the Tigers are rooting for the Crimson Tide to stay alive in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jim Fife, the play-by-play -play man, and uh, Jodine Jr. supplying the color on the Auburn radio network. Joe, Joe doing <laughs> double duty today. He huh? is. Didn't get enough of it. <laughs> uh, my question is, who's got the car? Yeah, well, we don't know. There's a similar story that happened to a Pat Riley with a new Corvette at the Kentucky Derby once. Handed that to the valet parking guy. Problem was, uh, he wasn't a valet parking man, and the Corvette was never seen again. Could be a pretty good scam, you know? Just get a jacket or something that looks like one of the guys are parking cars, and you're gone. I never thought I would see Auburn rooting for Alabama, but there you have it. Duck under by Wharton results in an opportunity at the foul line. Foul called on Burke. And uh, 42 points, six left as Brandon Wharton has a chance to uh, increase his scoring total. Tom, at the top of the show, you talked about these Tennessee Volunteers and the improvement that they made during the year, and I, I think certainly they, they did do that. And Kevin O'Neill looks back on his season this year. He's going to see some bright spots, and I think Brandon Wharton is probably the brightest spot that he has on this entire club, but cannot uh, take away the accomplishments of Black, who made the first team conference freshman team here. And also Hathaway, I thought, played very well this year. Question looming out there now, though, is will Kevin O'Neill be back for his fourth season, or will he be lured away by another school? Flanagan. Well, Hathaway had earmarks on that ball, but he couldn't get to him because Flanagan was up there so quickly. <laughs> Auburn uh, will win number 16, and uh, perhaps... Earn a ticket to the NIT. Hathaway forced it up and drew the foul from Burke. That'll be four on Pat. And before Hathaway shoots, we'll take a look at our BP best players for the game. Who else? Brandon Wharton, 26 points on 10 of 15 shooting. He also has uh, four rebounds. And Pat Burke, six of nine shooting, 13 points, five boards. Brandon Wharton about to finish his sophomore season at Tennessee. What a bright prospect for Vol fans. Of course, the senior Burke will be leaving Auburn, but will move into the Irish national team. He'll be playing in international competition with the Irish national team this summer. We noted earlier he uh, was born in Dublin, though he grew up in Florida, and uh, is still an Irish citizen, dual citizenship, and he will play for the Irish national team. But the Tigers not finished in Memphis yet. They'll play Kentucky tomorrow night. Wharton with a foul, 7.3 on the clock. Pretty good effort today by Cliff Ellis's troops. They came out here and really jumped on Tennessee right from the beginning. And they did it with defense. Everything that they did in that first five or six minutes, they were able to convert all of those turnovers that Tennessee were giving them into points. And I'm going to give Cliff Ellis a lot of credit. His team looked very good early, and they maintained it, even though Tennessee made a couple of runs at them. Story of the game was uh, Brandon Wharton scoring the first basket, and then after that, Tennessee went six or seven minutes without a point. They fell victim to that tough D of the Tigers, and Auburn went on a 17-0 run. During that stretch, Tennessee missed seven shots and turned it over seven times. And uh, for all intents and purposes, that was the ball game, although the balls would later close within four before Auburn kicked it back out. to an end and the season for the Tennessee Volunteers. The Bellas and the Auburn Tigers beating Kevin O'Neill and the Tennessee Vols by a final margin of 67 to 54. So Auburn
Auburn advances to meet Kentucky in tomorrow's quarterfinals. Back to Memphis after these messages from your local SEC stations.